Thank you for staying with us. Market fire disasters are becoming rampant, affecting many businesses. In recent times, fire outbreaks have garnered worldwide attention, serving both as an environmental and economic issue. Three days ago, more than 13 buildings were affected by a fire outbreak on Dosumu Street in Lagos Island. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, however, emphasized on the best technique for fighting fire and ways of prevention. Well, joining us in the studio for this conversation is Occupational Health and Safety Specialist, Ehi Ide. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Good Great. Morning. Now, this fire is coming, I think, about two or three weeks after a fire incident happened. And some other per uh, persons are reporting that even 24 hours before that fire incident, there was also another fire incident around uh, that same area on Lagos Island. Talk to us from your perspective and as an expert, what really is going on that, um, or what you're interpreting with this incessant market fires that we have been witnessing in recent times. Thank you so much. Let me start by establishing that the best way to fight fire is to prevent fire. Right. So we have to look at the, the um, process of prevention in the first place. Uh, Lagos markets as it is right now, you will expect to have these uh, issues as these until we all see it as a collective concern worth looking into by every expert around. These markets, as they are today, they were designed many years ago. And as, as at the time these markets were designed, we didn't have so much population as we have today in Lagos. So the market have expanded to a limit that they can't expand beyond. Yet people come in, relocate to Lagos, I mean, every hour. And most of them come in to buy or to sell. And these markets are the places where they head to. But I think it is important that we, we start going back as, as, a, as a people and as government, trying to look at what we can do, I mean, within this market. I mean, these are old structures that were built many years ago. Mm. And I'm sure when they were built as at that time, there were spaces, those spaces that were, that were designed within the market have been taken over and be, and be used to build stores. So if, I mean, if you go to some of these markets, you can't even have enough oxygen. Mm. It's so tight that you can't, my friend came from, from um, Cameroon some time ago to, look, to, to shop in one of the markets. He told me himself, he said, there was shortage of us in that he passed out. He fainted inside the market. Really? He, said, he said he only saw people pouring water him when he woke up. <laughs> but, he, but he's an African. Yeah, but he, he's, he's a Cameroonian. He has never seen such a thing before. Right. He passed out in the market. So is, is this bad? I think we need to look at how we can start. We can't redesign the market. We have to re remodel the market mm. right. from where it is right now to what we want them to be. Because now, if we do not, give us a difference when you say redesign, remodeling. Give us a difference. Redesign is to is to create a new architect architectural framework how the market should look like. Mm. When you remodeling, you look at what what you have already. How do we ensure it have a maybe better architect architectural outlook and enough space, but look better than how it was. But you just remove them, maybe put touches, uh, look at uh, access areas that are valuable. How do we take this out and put this in? So this is what we're talking about. Right. So talking about um, getting choked in the market, you know, there's one that is very close to us here, K2 market. I don't know whether you've been in there. You probably might find it very difficult to breathe if you get to certain chambers <laughs> of the market. <laughs> so, um, but this market that we're talking about, you know, the one under the radar is the recent one, the Dosumu market that got... You know, about 14 buildings were said to, you know, be affected with this fire. But what, what the cause that they said was a guy who was trying to refill his generator while it was in operation. Um, do you feel that that it was not enough uh, a cause? Or is it because of the way the market is being designed? No, no. Even at homes, these issues as this could still lead to fire outbreak. You know, when you, when you have fire sources, you have flammable, flammable are combustible materials. I mean, mm -hmm. close to fire sources. You just, you just give the fire the energy it needs to burn. So, I mean, in the market you have, I mean, this is one of the point I'm making now. In the market you have, you have people using kerosene stove. In the market you have LPGs from those that are cooking. In the market you have, you have um, 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 electrical overload. In the market you have weak appliances. And these are all, these are all issues that, when they, when you give them an opportunity to have an intercourse, 
you will have issues that we have as this. So we need to first look at what are the things. First thing we need, we need to first do is, have we ever done risk assessment of our markets? We haven't. We don't know what the markets, what the safety in the market. What, what I mean, government and, and, and its agencies. Is the government, government is the custodian of public safety. Mm. So it's the government that should be responsible in activating a risk assessment process in all the markets. So even this market that, was, that got bought right now, I bet you this market will reopen over time. But the, the risk assessment of the market in going forward will not still be done. We need to first start seeing how we can do an, an, an intensive risk assessment. Because what does risk assessment do for you? Risk as many we, we give, we, we, it will help you to know what are the issues that are available, how safe are we, what are the gaps that are available. If, we, if, uh, if issues happen, who could be hurt, to what degree will people be hurt, and what's this, and what we need to mitigate those issues that could happen. Once you have this document in your hand, what, what you have is it will give you a document that you need to rectify what could happen in the future. We are not saying that we know error margin, but what you have done with that document is that you have done a thorough analysis and you are able to say, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen, then what are the possible control measures? And we will put them in place. What we have done is that we reduce the risk exposure to a non-disturbing a non limit. And this is what we should be doing. And this is what we haven't done. Uh, I like the fact that you are putting the government uh, on the front burner right now because it is the one that, that is settled, saddled with the responsibility of taking up this this that you have mentioned because over the the years this particular location have witnessed several fires yeah. and we have not seen a critical analysis of what the root causes and how we can mitigate these fires over time are we saying or are you saying that government is relaxed and not on its toes with regards to addressing these matters because when you look at the video when our reporter uh, went to the fire to this scene of the incident and he was speaking uh, with the various agencies that were present there. I recall that one of them said that uh, they noticed uh, generators being hung around the buildings and that is one thing that they are <coughs> looking to address. So, and then Nema saying that they have, you know, um, done some level of sensitization, but these persons are still doing these same things that we are talking about See, now. We're not saying government is relaxed. We're saying government is not doing enough. The effort is not sufficient. You just made a very clear point. At the point that we saw generators, they were hanging at strategic positions. We should perceive, perceive that as potential risk or hazard within the, within the market. The truth is, when you talk about fire safety, how do you call prevention, response, and evacuation? Right. Firstly, I mentioned prevention earlier on. Mm -hmm. When the fire happens, are we, are, do we have enough, enough um, uh, capacity to respond? Let me even point it out, even in the market, I mean, let's use Lagos as a clear example. Lagos have what you call retinue of organized, um, organized health in the market. I use, I use that word, okay? Mm -hmm. What we should do, these people are in the market every day, they collect money from victims, I mean, people that collect money from. What I think government should do, give, them, give those people tasks to do. Mm. Get them involved in your market fire safety plan and response because they are often the first responders yes they, they, most of them even live there give them tasks to do have a plan train these people they become the ones who help you to enforce what you because you can't say legal safety commission they can't be in the market at all times but these guys you're talking about these thoughts they are in the market at all times use them judiciously you become our eyes in the market we have trained you with this what we want, we want to do if there are generators that you see that are running within, and take it out. These are the things we want to see. These are the things we don't want to see. They become people that go from shop to shop to look at what are the things that are going on. And when they see, like, when that guy was pouring fuel, that's a very risky thing to do. But somebody saw that person pouring fuel in a running generator. In a run but you don't see, outside, outside the government effort, we should also understand the fact that we need, we need to influence positive behavior among human beings. There are a lot of human errors that also lead to this fire outbreak within the market. Even in your home, when you pour fuel on the running generator and you expect that you, you won't get burnt, and this is a place where that's highly populated. I mean, from what I read about that report, I mean, part of the place, uh, 
places, stores that first got born at where this weavon was sold. And weavon are, are flammable materials. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of materials that are, that are made of papyrus, papers, mm -hmm. in the market. These are all petroleum materials that when, when they get close to fire, they just got to burn. And they help you to escalate or expand the fire beyond what you can control. And even when the fire starts, do we have enough people to respond? I bet you people have, 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 have stood to see all that all they have labored for go down in flame because they were extinguishers, they just didn't know how to operate it. Mm. How many people in the market have we trained on how to, even if they are extinguishers, how to operate the extinguishers? Most of the Lagos and Civil Commission go to inspect this market and there are extinguishers that are expired. They, they, they are expired, but to refill them, I mean, service them to usable state, is a problem. So we, we don't, the government may not have all the capacity within a workforce, mm. But we need to see this, this idle guys that we see in the market. Yeah. I think government at this that, point should pull them, yeah, pull them to mm -hmm. positive use and help them support government in their fire uh, uh, prevention system. I think I like the idea of um, you know, those who are tax collectors within the market to be you know, given more tax to do. <clears throat> but um, if they have to um, fight against those who are using generators, in fact, the fumes alone can choke people around there, the kind of environmental hazards that they also you know, bring up. Uh, but do you not do you not think because we have inadequate power supply now we've been talking about the yeah. band aid and we don't know what band those kind of markets we, you know we fought under yeah. do you not feel that it is very essential now that okay per adventure in the case where we don't have enough electricity to go round shouldn't there be a central generator that will power you know strategic places of the market and then people will subscribe to it. A very strong point you made because the question you asked yourself if there was power available in the market, that guy that was fueling the generator, we have no reason mm. to. So, m this is where we go to the, the root cause of the accident. Yeah, a great point that is, but I think instead of just having I mean, power, government, you know, gov you know, government can actually, actually make these people halfway and build a turbine in the market. Mm. We should look at those, those, op those possibilities. How, what is the cost of turbine? Government know, knows how much they generate from this market on a daily basis. And the amount of waste that Yes. Let's market. meet you halfway. If the turbine is S and S amount, government will support you guys 40%. You guys will need to make 60% available and own the system. So that at any point in time, the light in the market does not blink. It's, it's a cleaner energy than having generator in the market. And even that generator in the market could, see, could see be a source of fire outbreak. When we're able to create this turbine and it supports that market on its own, you find out that what we saw that led to this fire, I mean, will be a thing of the past. So we need to start thinking of smart approaches, I mean, that are, that are safer than what we have right now, so that people don't have reason to bring, I mean, people keep kegs of, petro, of, of uh, 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 fuel in their stores, mm. because most times they want to run, run their gym because they, they, there's no light and the fuel is customers scarce. And or, yeah, exactly. Customers come in, there's no light to see, to see the fabric you want yeah. to buy clearly. So they are forced to run generator continuously and they need fear and, and they have to keep this fear in their, in their shops. So understand that the, the, all these shops are also highly interconnected. Mm -hmm. So when one shop is affected, you just have a, a, a linkage of, of, of risk. I mean, the fire keeps spreading until, until we are able to control it. And again, we need to see how we can also, we can also have a more fire system within those areas that we can, firefighting system within those areas that we see as highly fire prone areas. The market, as we've seen in May recently, we've had um, a continuous uh, fire outbreak. We need to see how we can have dedicated fire trucks to those areas and how the markets are even designed these days. Even if the fire trucks get to those markets, fire trucks will not have access to where the fire mm -hmm. is exactly. So mo those, those, those roads, those pathways that were, that were designed with the market, they have all been overtaken by stores and mm. people trading on the road. So even the, if the fire trucks have to assess where the fire is, they will, not have, uh, they will find it difficult to assess. So that's another thing we must look at. Because if they assess the fire source early enough, the control will be faster. But if they don't have access to the fire source, you just wait and see this thing burn for a long time before they can get access to those areas. Perhaps this is why some persons believe governments should begin to invest in fire fire investigation research so that they can understand the causes and the dynamics of fire better you you, you cannot you cannot come up with with um, if you don't know what really happened you are bound to make the same mistake right. and that's why the point you just brought up so first thing we should look at right now is when nothing in occupational here when nothing happened the fourth next line of action is accident investigation what are you doing you're trying to do a post-mortem what really what really happened what could we have done better that we didn't do 
what shouldn't shouldn't we have done that we did that led to this accident? I think at the moment, what, what, that place should be condoned out. The next thing that, that yeah, the government has said is shutting the place. Yeah, the next definitely. thing that, that should be that should that should be set in motion is accident investigation to see what was really the, the root causes and the surface causes of what happened in that market. Because this is the reason I can give information you need. I mean, to build back better and to mitigate uh, as, as such occurrences. I mean. That could, that could come up in future. So research is very good because most time we just see, we, we wait for people to, the, 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 the trend to die down and the markets are open. That's not enough. And that's why we must have these things happening over and over again. We need to do a thorough accident investigation, do the incident analysis and know what really happened so that we are able to use that. I mean, as a matter of fact, we government, I will use the opportunity to restructure that market. Mm. Mm. Well, there is hardly any market across the nation that hasn't witnessed one fire disaster or another. Even though the government tries to put everything in place. I love what um, we're seeing at um, the one close to us here, Jack Day Market. Mm -hmm. Even my top market is also being, you know, um, uh, rehabilitated, you know, revamped and all of that. <laughs> like uh, that <laughs> 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 because there are some people that live there, <laughs> really. So, um, but can we also rule out the rules of um, arsonists? Because there are some people who are bent on causing, you know, who are mischievous, who want to you know, destroy things. Can we rule out that role? Even though the government tries to put everything in place, overnight you just see fire starting and then the next thing we start blaming electricity, sparks here and there. What about some arsonists? Yeah, arson, arson is a critical issue um, and um, that, that, could, that could happen. But we, we need to also understand that, I mean, assume, okay, that if you have fire, if you have continuous fire outbreak, 20% or 30% of them may not be linked to arsonists. They are, most of them are electrical mark function. And the truth is that you are, if, if you have an arsonist, I mean, attack a market and burn down the market, you, the, the first thing we should be looking at, once we, that is established, what was the reason be, behind the action of the arsonist is what, is what we should not be looking at. But we can't we can, we can pinpoint, at, pinpoint that right now until we're able to know exactly what were the what were the reasons why the what, uh, what led to this accident in the market? Why the market got burned and then um, the the root and the surface causes so that we can use that to understand what really happened. Because if you don't understand what happened, you can't build back better. Understanding what understanding history is helping us to to correct mistakes in the future. Well, it is reported that, um, like we mentioned earlier, uh, someone the generator was running and he was you know uh, putting in uh, fuel, so to speak, and then. Yeah, everything just sparked some fires. No, as 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 he was put, for, as he was putting it fail, and the truth is that when you see that fire burst, there's 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 his care. Yeah. I mean, and the next action is to fling that kind of fear. That was and that. He did. Yes, that's that's what he will do. The next action is to fling that kind of fear. And what he have done, that he did that. Yes. It's not to spread the fire. Mm. Yeah, but there are kegs, uh, jerry cans, uh, you know, containing fuel. But what I said, answer is I'm not referring to the Dosmo market. I'm only saying. No, no, I under, uh, yeah. clearly, clearly, I understand. So, so I was going there because uh, you were talking about investigating what, hap what happened, the cause mm. of the fire. And uh, I want to bring in the aspect of our responsibility as people yeah. who are in the market. Yeah. We also need to speak to, to that issue, how people can take responsibility. Yes, the, the government agency said they had created some level of awareness with regards to these things, but it seems people are still not buying into it. You know, I, I'll say here, what that guy was doing was shortcut. He knew what to do. Two minutes to turn down your generator mm -hmm. and allow the place be in darkness for that two minutes yeah. and follow the due process of properly refilling that generator why it's not in operation it's not on that was the shortcut but what shortcut does to us is that shortcut always cut our life short mm. but the shortcut he, 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 he did right now look at the look at the losses mm. i mean that came with that shortcut this is what we talk about in safety if there is only a safe way to do things once you contravene these safe ways of doing things, what you have is a colossal loss. And that's what we saw. This guy right now, we don't know. If, we don't even know if he was if that guy should be badly burnt. I mean, in, I'm assuming they said he ran away or something. Some mm. reports said he. They didn't report any okay. casual. It should, it should be because if he was the one that was directly doing this. But this is where we talk about the shop owners and those that work with them. The shop owners are the employers. They are the business owners. People that work with them are their employees. You should, if you, if you, if you, it's your responsibility as a shop owner or an employer to create safe and safe work environment 
for your people. So you, you I mean, you saw that guy, or you, you that, that somebody saw that guy when he was filling that that tank while the gen was on, and nobody deemed deemed it necessary to stop that guy. In safety, we talk about issue of when you when you see something, you say, say something. something. Yeah. So if somebody has said something and stopped that guy at that point. Back to the point, this is what we talk about, collective responsibility. Mm. I said earlier on that government cannot be in the market at all time. Government mm. have more work to do. So no, going to stay, governments also in the Yeah, market. I understand. Going to stay in the market to look at issues like this, that's where we need more, uh, more awareness, more advocacy, more education, so that you understand your actions, what it could lead you to. But if the education was intense and strong enough and made impact in the market, and somebody saw uh, this guy feeling uh, that, that uh, gene while, while it was on, you know that Whatsoever impact that we have result due to that guy's action will affect me. So when we when we're not able to see the connectedness of our actions and, our, and and how it poses risk to all of us, so we don't need to leave that guy to do what he's doing, knowing that his response, what he's doing, may be wrong, but I will be impacted. So we make the collective responsibility as a communal effort to nip things on the board before they escalate to the point that we have it right now. So this is where again I come back to where. I, I mentioned those those almost legal touts that are in the market. Government need to use them at this time. Mm. Put them to productive use. Aside them, there's a limit to what they can yes, do as well. Put them to productive use. Have what you call market people, not not the not the shop boys, the market owners, the one who pay for the shops. They should have what you call what you call um, not not a, a community or what you call cooperative. Mm. We need this cooperative. Saddle people with the responsibility among this cooperative. And these are the fire warden we have within this cooperative. Yeah. You understand? These are the people that are responsible for fire outbreak within this cooperative. So it's not become that responsibility when they come in and see you doing what they know is inimical. I mean, to the safety of that market, That's right. they have the right to sanction you. Right. So the truth is that sanction drives safety. Mm. So when you when they sanction you one, two, three times, and you know you have paid daily for those actions. But those actions didn't lead to accident. But if, you are, if they were left to continue, would have left to accident. But those sanctions now, now create what you call uh, behavioral change amongst the people. And you find out that those behaviors that used to be risky amongst us, they begin so, to drive down. So does that mean that uh, perhaps we are not learning lessons from all of the incidents that we have had over time? You know, what we have learned from history is that we learn nothing from history. Mm. So most times we think we have learned a lot from what others happened. And we're surprised that what you thought we learned from yesterday, somebody just didn't repeat the behavior. And that's how it has been. So we need to have what you call a, a concerted effort. It's not a one-off one thing. I mean, when you talk about advocacy, education, and uh, awareness program, it's not a one-off thing. You keep reinforcing, strengthening those messages. Don't just go to the market and tell them, oh, fire is bad. When it happens, everybody suffers, and you do that once in six months. No. I mean, we we'll keep reinforcing it. Not just that, go to see what is happening within the market. Maybe, like in companies, what we have in companies is two ball talk. You can also introduce this to, 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 the, to the marketplace. Before you start your market every morning, have 20 minutes, 15 minutes to sit down and talk to yourself about fire safety. They will tell you that time is money. But everybody have lost now. Mm -hmm. If you say time is money, what we have lost now is it, is it not money. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you, if you cannot spend one minute to think through your process and keep yourself safe, you will lose everything in one minute that you refuse to, to, to spare. So mm -hmm. now, we didn't have time to look at what could, what, what could be uh, detrimental to us or to talk about it as a, as a brief before we start our work. But now we have all lost so much and we have folded our hands. We are asking ourselves, how did we get it? What could, what could we have done better? That's but we could have done something that would prevent us from coming to this level. Create time to do what is necessary mm -hmm. so that you don't, you don't wait in the evening to weep over your colossal losses. And in talking about yes. profit and loss, you know, this is an era where we are talking about um, you know, um, some challenges we're facing with the economy, even though the economy yes. is somewhat bouncing back and all of that. I would like you to talk to us about what, how you think market fires affect the, uh, the impact of local economy and also the lives of the vendors. And with this, what do you think the government can help you know, the people of the market, those who have lost millions or billions yeah. of Naira, you know, to this disaster. Let me start from the back. The first thing government should, one of the things government should, should enforce right now is insurance for the market. I'm not sure most of this market, this market should be insured and the operators of the market are the ones that must pay for the insurance. Mm -hmm. Because insurance cushion effect as this, because when you have accident as this, the next, the next thing you do is 
go to insurance because this was insured. So you are able to bounce back better, back to the economy you're bringing in. Now, these guys that have lost a whole lot, I mean, most of them may not be able to come back to business again. That's a loss for us as a country. And this business that we're born, where if you look at the, the chain, the chain of influence, we're responsible for taking care of a whole lot of people. There are people that supply things to these businesses. There are people these businesses were feeding. There are a lot of people that were benefiting from these businesses, but now they've gone. You have a whole lot of chain of chain of hurt or chain of pain that you find within the line. But we must look at it that yes, we, when this happened, even people who maybe external or internal people who want to go into this kind of businesses in this market are now skeptical because Having shops in this market are no longer attractive because of the fear of fire outbreak. Mm -hmm. We must make market attractive again by remodeling the market and ensuring that market becomes safe for people again. If it continues like this, the scare of people coming to the market, and because anything happens, even when, when, when any sound you hear, it creates apprehension because you don't know if it's another fire outbreak. So people that come to the market are not even safe, neither are the traders. Who, who, are, who are the main people in that market are safe. So we need to see what we can do. As a matter of fact, we need to sit down. I, I don't like people com creating committees to look at issues, but I think, I mean, what you can do, get an external consultant who is not a government person, mm. independent consultant to review what is really happening within this market fire space or ecosystem and see what we can do, what can come out from this analysis, then these information are brought to government. We don't want to see analysis or investigation that, that, that come up as a report that end up on the shelf. Reports should be acted on. You see, most times we, we wonder why you spend money in commissioning people to do a study on some issues, and when the report from those studies, when they are fully brought to you, they end up in the shelf. If we know we don't want to do it, there's nothing to even tell somebody to waste time and waste resources doing this study. So we need to really get it done to know what's really happening. So that we can, we can bring peace back to people's mind. We assure people that the market is safe. Because it is right now, we don't know. We, this, this happened right now. The question is, which market is next? Mm, that's, that's the big question. And I believe that uh, market authorities should now begin to take it upon themselves to ensure that um, there's some level of safety and that they are fireproof as it is. But the integrity of some structures are being questioned as it is right now. Uh, that's another aspect I would like for you to quickly look at before we begin to wrap up our conversation. Um, are there structures, are there building materials that are fireproof that we should be looking at? You're looking at remodeling uh, these markets. Now, what should we be looking at if we're talking about remodeling uh, these markets? You know, I mentioned earlier when I was starting that most of these structures, markets are old. They were not designed I mean, to be in the state that they're in now. Most of the buildings are old. Let's mm. see how we can look at it. And this, that's why you talk about the integrity of those buildings. Mm. And, and Atlanta, a number of buildings collapsed yesterday yeah. because of this thing. These are old buildings. Some of the buildings have been there maybe as far back as 1971. I wasn't even born then. You understand? So we need to see how we can. The, I mean, if buildings get old, the integrity cannot, can, we can't rely on the integrity of those buildings anymore. Let's see what we can do. Maybe collapse them in phases and see how we can rebuild them and they become better structures and the intensity is better to stand the test of time. So we have in a lot of those buildings within this market. These are old markets and we need to see how we can start demobilizing those buildings gradually. And again, I won't be, I won't be surprised if, if what we have, some of the buildings we have in this market were even built that were, that were built with asbestos. Asbestos has become a key issue right now that mm -hmm. has a whole lot of a whole lot of exposure, I mean, with, with high likelihood to cause cancer. So mm -hmm. we have to look at when were those buildings born, built. I'm sure most of those buildings, we, I don't know, but I suspect are buildings that were built in the days that were using asbestos in construction in Nigeria. So a whole lot of issues, if, if, not, if, not, if not just for the fire issue, but for, the, for what researchers have revealed in, in recent times, all we right. need to start pulling down some structures and see how we can remodel our markets and so that we all can have what you call collective peace. Absolutely. That's a fine place to leave the conversation. Ehi Ide, Occupational Health and Safety Specialist, thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me. All right. You're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's bring you the news update at this time. President Bola Tinubu urged 